What's up YouTube, AVI back in another video. Today we are gonna be reviewing one of the most reliable and one of the most affordable uh, sedans on the market today. This is a 2021 Toyota Camry SE. Um, and we're gonna give you guys a full exterior, interior, driving impressions, engine bay, all that stuff on this review. Um, but before we get to it, please subscribe, smash the like button, and let's get to it. We'll start on the exterior here. It is raining, um, sleeting a little bit. Uh, starting on the exterior here, we have some pretty nice rims, which actually remind me of the Toyota Supra rims. Um, we have that black um, glossy here, but then also the silver, which reminds me of the Toyota Supra rims. These are 18 inch wheels that come standard with the SE uh, model. So one thing I should mention is the SE model is the second trim model. So it starts with the SE and there are eight trims total, not including the hybrid. So this is the SE, which is the second trim. Uh, I go all the way up to like TRD X or something like that, which price point varies drastically with about 20 to 30 grand difference. Uh, coming on now, no blind spot monitoring on this SE. It is an option that you can get, but currently not on our SE. This is here. You do have four doors. Obviously Toyota Camrys and Corollas only come in four doors. We have some of this plastic accents, duct work, like the Toyota Supra has um, following that similar design, as well as taillights that are huge that wrap all the way from the trunk all the way across the body. So it is pretty cool. Coming on to the back end now, it looks as if you would have quad exhaust. You do only have two pipes on the SE. The TRD does have two on the right as well as two on the left. Um, but just for this SE, it only has those two. You do have a small rear diffuser here, which makes it look a little bit sporty as opposed to just your nor normal Toyota Camry. Camry letters running against the back and the Toyota logo. You do have a small spoiler here, not too much, not to look too much sporty, but it does look more sporty in my opinion than the average affordable sedan. Coming on to my favorite part of the review is the gas cap. Let's see. It is done from inside of the car, so that's good money saving in 2023. It does get 28 miles per gallon in the city and 39 in the highway, which is really, really good um, for just a entry level um, affordable sedan. Coming on to the front. To me, the front is the, the best part of the car. It does look very sporty with all of this um, plastic cladding, I assume. Um, and it is a lot fake, like these are fake. And this is fake, some functional, some fake. Um, but it does look really sporty and the, the Toyota logo is fairly large. Um, so I think it looks sportier than your Honda Civics um, in similar cars of its competitors. So now we'll head in, inside and show you guys some of those features. All right, guys, we are inside the interior of the Toyota Camry now. First thing to note when you get inside, the seats are pretty sporty for an entry-level Toyota. They are bolstered a little bit on the sides, but not too much, so they don't hug you too much, and they're not too loose. Uh, you do have some, some compactness inside of the seats, and you do have this um, gray in line with the black stitching, so it is pretty, pretty nice uh, for the seats. And on other trims, you can get heated uh, seats, but on the SE, it does not come with heated seats. Headed to the steering wheel, you do have a decent steering wheel i've never understood why toyota does this i wish this this would be um you know hollowed out you do have the toyota logo in the center along with all of your features that you can get um so this left gauge will will control your um, center screen over there just toggle through windows and your right screen will control your cruise control uh, speaking of cruise control we've been on a, a trip um for a couple hundred miles now and i've been getting used to this cruise control i don't love it um this is active uh, radar cruise control so it will slow you down and speed you up based on how closely someone in, is in front of you the issue is if someone pulls off the next exit off of the highway it will drastically slow you down when in fact they're no longer in your lane so it is a little bit finicky and i'm sure you can adjust the sensitivity uh, in one of these menus um, going on to the center screen this center screen is very toyota uh, they have this in pretty much all the the um, models across the brand um, so toyota camry toyota corolla uh, Toyota RAV4, I'm pretty sure all has this. You do have single um, AC climate controls inside of the SE. Uh, higher trims, you can get dual. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, fan speed, uh, temperature, um, and all everything you need. I do like that they are in buttons and not yet in the screen. Um, one thing that you can do is you can configure this whole center screen. You can, right now it has miles per gallon, audio, and then when you connect your phone, you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built-in, which I believe is standard. Let me know in the comments below, but I believe it is standard. Coming up now to typical car features nowadays, 
um, lights up here for both driver and passenger, as well as sun, uh, sunglass holder up here with sun visors here with mirror in both driver and passenger. No light though. No sunroof here, you do have a light for the back. And pretty basic, um, the gear selector is manual, unlike the dials that you get in a lot of the newer cars. Uh, here, that this is where trim modes will be held. Sport mode, eco mode, snow and wet mode will all be here for the higher trims on the SE. It does not have that. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the front seat. Maybe let's head into the back seat now. All right, we're jumping onto the back seat now. First thing to note, back seat is pretty comfortable actually. You do have the similar type of material as the front seats with that uh, cloth material inside and the leather. Outside, not as bolster as the front seat, so it's a little bit more roomy back here. And headroom is decent for not that tall of a dude, but do have quite a bit of leg room, as well as headroom. Um, do have pockets, both on driver and passenger seats. One thing to note is we did just do a review on a Kia, uh, about similar price point, a little bit newer, but they did have USB-C uh, outlets in the seats, and that is not something that we get on the Toyota Camry SE. Maybe on higher trims, let me know in the comments below. Um, other things to note, you do get cup holders, which is pretty standard, um, nothing crazy. You do not have storage. I know that's a feature that a lot of people like in the back seat. No heated and cooled um, seats or climate control back here, which is, I'm sure, definitely an option as the higher trims you get, but just not on the SE. Um, and also you have a lot of uh, car seat anchors here, um, which is a good uh, family, family cruiser. Um, so yeah, not, not much to note. Back here, no sunroof or anything like that. Um, but maybe now let's head on to the trunk because there's a decent amount of trunk space. So let's go show you guys. All right, now we're at the trunk. And of course, it starts to rain. We should be good. We're not going to melt. Uh, first thing to know, like I said, there is a decent amount of trunk space here. We have a full-size duffel bag, and it doesn't even take up anywhere close to any of the space. You can throw this into the side. You can definitely fit at least four, plus you have space way in the back. You're looking at at least six full-size duffel bags. Uh, as well as some pillows and backpacks. No issue whatsoever. All right, here we are at the engine bay. Uh, comes standard with the LE, which is the first trim and the SE as well. Um, is a 2.5 liter, four cylinder, naturally aspirated engine. Good for 203 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Good for zero to 60 for about uh, eight seconds. I think it's like 7.9 or something like that. As you get higher up in the trims, you can get a 3.5 liter engine. So like I said, this is 2.4, you can get a higher um, a bigger engine in that 3.5, starting at the TRD um, trim, which is good for 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds. Um, so if you're looking for a little bit more power, maybe, uh, maybe look into that TRD. Next thing to note is the key. It is not keyless push to start on the SE. You do have a standard key here um, with actually ignition. Can you believe that in 2023? Jeez. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is it for the engine bay. Um, not the fastest, but it's definitely super reliable. That is one thing that a lot of people like about the Toyotas is the super reliable engine. And this engine I see to have no issues with the reliability. Now let's get it on the road and see how it does. Off in the Toyota Camry SE. It is raining now, so I'm not going to push too hard as this is front wheel drive. All wheel drive is an option on um, the Toyota Camry SE, but this particular car is is equipped with front wheel drive. So here we go. Let's do a mild acceleration. Like I said, it is wet. has decent power, but I honestly think the transmission is letting it down a little bit. It takes forever to shift. On this car, you do have paddle shifters, which is a nice feature, especially for one of the base trims. Like I said, the SE, which is the second highest trim. We can drop, so currently we're fifth gear, drop a couple gears, drop a couple more. But the pickup is just not impressive. I really think the transmission is, is um, holding this car down a little bit from top performance. And I wonder, if you do get the higher trims, will the transmission be a little bit better with that higher power with the 3.5 liter rather than the 
Visibility is pretty good. Like I said, it's raining right now. We do have full view of the front. Hood isn't, doesn't get in the way at all in the rear. Um, it's a little bit hindered by those two back seats, the two back seat headrests, but it's not too bad. View off the sides is good. It's a typical sedan, so you're not gonna get too much crazy um, limited uh, visibility. Our current trip, like I said, we're getting 38 miles per gallon on our total trip. Uh, that's actually highway, pretty much primarily highway. So that highway number of 39 miles per gallon is pretty spot on. So braking, these brakes aren't any performance brakes or anything like that, but let's see how they do on some wet ground. We're gonna do a little brake here. It is pretty good brake feel, honestly. Um, handling, a little floaty. I wish it was a little bit more precise, but like I said, it's a entry level trim for a reliable and affordable car. So I don't expect too much similar to like the Supra and the um, now GR Corolla and anything like that. It's not gonna be as precise as some of those steering, steering feels. You don't have any adjustable steering, like in some of the new cars, you are able to change the drive modes of the steering, make it spore or make it really um, floaty and just, I think it's called comfort. Yeah, comfort steering. Uh, but like I said, on the SE, you don't, don't get any of those, those options. Ride quality is pretty good. I'm used to my Jeep, um, which is very harsh. And this is pretty luxurious compared to that. I'm sure it's not up to par some of the Audis and Lexuses and cars of that brand, but for an entry level Toyota, it's pretty good. Let's do one more pull uphill and see how the transmission does it. We're gonna downshift. It's a dog, I'm sorry. It's not fast. Um, the transmission, like I said, is the biggest thing that lets it down, I think. If this had a manual, be able to roll your own gears, I think it would probably be um, it would feel much faster than the automatic. The automatic, when you're shifting, it's just taking forever to get you into that next gear. But that is the driving impressions. Um, my final thoughts on the Toyota Camry SE. I think if you're looking for reliability, definitely consider this. If you're looking for a family sedan, definitely consider this, especially with the four doors, the car seat, tie downs, readily accessible, tons of trunk space, great gas mileage, it's great. If you're looking for performance, I would not recommend the 2.5 liter. I would recommend the TRD, which is a 3.5. You still get all the same size um, and reliability. Uh, so I would definitely look into that. If you're looking for sound or driving experience, I'd maybe consider something outside of Toyota, unless you're gonna get the Supra or the new VR86. If you're looking for more of that sports feel, if the Supra is a little bit out of your price point and you don't need the four doors. Um, at the time of this review, this is a 2021 car. They are making the GR Corolla, which is coming out in 2023, which is the year we're currently in. I would definitely consider that if you're looking for some of that same reliability with more driving feel and a little bit more peppy, um, peppiness in the car. But that's my overall view. Like I said, this car starts at 27,000 uh, for the 2021 year. Um, and it's getting a little bit more expensive than the new ones, but still definitely reliable and definitely uh, affordable. So great car uh, overall but if you guys are watching at this point please subscribe smash the like button and just like that abi out oh you're gonna have to go get me Should you mention the, child lock? the camera lady has to go get me out because the child <laughs> lock is turned on